everybody. This is Dana Lopez from the Inn. Um, welcome to In Gratitude, our podcast where we spotlight very, very special people that support our organization. Um, today, I'm so proud and so happy to be here with Stacey Wiener, who is the um, founder of an organization called Soap Sack. And, you know, I'm actually going to um, bring Stacey on. Hi, Stacey. How are you? Hi, hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, it's Dana. To, hi, it's so great to have you. Um, you've got a really great story. What happened with you, and I'll let you drive, but what happened with you is that you actually volunteered at organizations and saw a need. So talk a little bit about what that need was and what you did to sort of answer the call. Okay, great. Well, I just want to let you know that SAC stands for Sup Supporting a Community with Kindness. And it was a little over four years ago, I was volunteering. I live in Monmouth County, New Jersey, and I was volunteering at a food pantry. And clients would come in and they would ask for soap. And more times than none, we didn't have it. Most people, when they think to donate to a food pantry, they donate food, which obviously is very important. I don't want to take away from that. But we didn't have soap. And I found out that Client, our clients could not use SNAP and other food, um, you know, government subsidies to purchase toiletries such as soap, um, you know, shampoo, conditioner. And at the time, previous to that, I had been knitting and crocheting different items for different organizations, you know, scarves and hats. And I thought, I don't know. I feel like I have something here. So I went onto YouTube. I found a soap sack pattern, which I'll show you, uh, you know, some samples. And I tweaked it a little bit. I bought some soap and I brought it back to the pantry. And the over, the response was so overwhelmingly positive that I remember going into my car and I said, wait a minute. I, I really do think I have something here. And so that's how it really all started, which was just shy of four years ago. And, um, since then, I, I mean, initially it was just my county and neighboring county, and it was me, you know, inspiring some local friends and some local knitting and crochet groups to get involved. But with media exposure, this has turned into an international organization. We have volunteers, I know, all over the United States, every state, by the way, uh, Canada, Asia, Australia, Europe, people that are making these soap sacks, ones like, you know, this. Um, you know, we have different ones. People are donating them to LGBTQ organizations. The red, white, and blue ones are going to veteran clinics. We just have, you know, some, some basic ones and they're donating them in their own communities to homeless shelters, food pantries, veteran clinics, relief efforts, um, mission, mission trips. If they're going on mission trips, um, you know, LGBTQ organizations, social service agencies all over. And wait till I tell you, since I started this, on just shy of 200,000 soap sacks have been donated globally. Can you believe it? Wow, that's that unbelievable. Un I know. I, I mean, and they're adorable. I mean, just yeah. can you hold another one up for us? Oh, like, sure, absolutely. So, so these, this is like an example of a crocheted one. Okay. Um, and then we have people that don't crochet, so they knit. I mean, you could really do any pattern. Uh, our clients are, you know, making their own patterns as long as they're using cotton yarn it doesn't have to be expensive yarns yarn you would get at like michael's or joann's um and um as long as it has like a loop or some of them have a drawstring so they can hang it up if they are using it as a washcloth you know mm -hmm. dana some people are using them as washcloths some are using it to store their soap and some aren't using it at all they're just it's like a gift pouch oh, so instead yeah. of so like here's an example so you know we put a full bar of soap in each one um not like the travel size and which is incredible because we want them to be able to feel clean for more than one or two showers. And you know, some of it, instead of handing it to them, as seems a bit impersonal, they're getting what we could say is like a gift pouch. You know, this one happens to be adorable. This one, look at that. It's like a dragonfly. Somebody made that. Um, so that, so that's what we did. And it's just incredible. And our volunteers either do soap drives to try to get money for the soap, or they buy the soap, or they have groups that, you know, will donate the soaps for them. So yeah, so it's amazing. You can that see my enthusiasm. I love it. I just, I just can't believe how, well, how rewarding it has been. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, if you think about it, when this necessity is the mother of invention, right? Exactly. So you went in, you saw a need, you had a skill, and obviously you weren't the only one that had that type of skill. And you just kind of made this amazing thing out of it. Um, and also they're made, you can tell they're just made with love. They are. And that's what the tag says. Did you say? 
the tag. <laughs> we have a tag that gets attached to each one. I hope you could see it. Probably it's a little blurry, but it says that this soap sack was made with love by a sack volunteer. So you're Absolutely. right. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, you know, I, you know, I actually need to know, Stacey, how did you find us? Because you, so you're obviously you're spread across the nation now, yeah. but um, you're in New Jersey. You're based. Yes, in New I am. I'm down by the shore. Island. Yes. So how did that connection happen? Okay. Well, that was very exciting. So as I said, like a majority of our volunteers are out there donating in their own communities, but there's some people that don't want to donate them. So they donate the sacks to us. And which was, is great because it gives me the opportunity. I'm so busy with other aspects of SAC that I don't um, have the time to, to crochet them and knit them anymore. So I have these volunteers that'll send me the sacks and that gives me the opportunity of donating them wherever I am. So um, Cynthia Susic reached out to me a couple of months ago and she said we, she had heard about us and would love to have several, you know, hundred soap sacks for your, um, for the inn. And normally when people ask if it's local, it's easy, but, you know, I couldn't possibly mail several hundred soap sacks. That would be, you know, very, very costly. Um, so I looked where she was located and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a friend that lives like in the next town over. This is like perfect. I'm going to make the trip, but it was very far. It was definitely took me three and a half hours to get home, two and a half hours to get there, but you know, the traffic in that area. So, um, but I made a whole day out of it. So I went there and I met with Cynthia. She showed me around. Your, the inn is so incredible. You guys are doing just, just really amazing work. Um, so it was perfect. I just had this great opportunity because otherwise, if it was much further away, I just would have mailed like a box of 50 and that just would not be enough. You guys you needed do all that. that. You drove, how many did you donate? We have to say this. 300. <laughs> hundred yeah. soap sacks, which is yes. so amazing. I did. Um, and I was so happy. And the car <laughs> smelled so good on that, you know, two and a half hour ride there. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, yeah. I'm sure that Cynthia told you, and for those that are watching that may not know, um, when our building was open for guests to come into the soup kitchen, we have bathrooms with showers. So every day um, there were me. guests that came in that would sign up and come in and take a shower. Obviously, through the pandemic and since COVID, we have not been able to offer that service, which is interesting because normally we would ask for travel size. So right, that's what she did say. Yes, she did say that. Yes. Use. Right. Yeah. So, but because we're giving them away and people are taking them somewhere else to use, we need the full sizes. So yes. it's kind exactly. of like a a destiny thing that we it was I know time, and I got right? I know I was so she was telling me that and I was like oh my gosh this was like it was meant that our paths would cross you know? absolutely yeah. there are no accidents right yes no 100 so, you know, I agree with, with 300 bars of soap with a you know uh a, what can be used as a pouch or a washcloth and that's important yeah. right because you mentioned that it has to be um cotton yarn right. Which is softer and easier skin, to wash. Absolutely. Right? Right. So it's dual purpose and they look cute and they're yeah. functional. So it just right. works all around. We're so, so grateful. Um, you know, so now that we have met now, since right. we met through this, you know, uh, yes. kismet, Yes. To continue. So I, Oh, absolutely. I'm oh, I'm definitely making the trip again. I told Cynthia oh, when she you. needs more, let me know. Now I know how to get there. Don't even need, you know, <laughs> Google Maps or Waze. I'm just, yeah. And it was just, it was really wonderful to be able to do okay. that. You know, it's not often that, you know, I donate 300 at a time, uh, but this was really special. So I was very, very happy. And I'm just so grateful for all the people, my volunteers that donate the soap, you know, either through our Amazon wish list or the groups that are doing the soap drives, because it's not so easy. You know, I, I the first year I kind of incurred the cost, you know, my husband and I for everything, for the soap, for the yarn. But now yeah. I have these wonderful volunteers that make the sacks, that donate the, the, the you know, that donate the soap. So um, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm hoping that through this, if anyone's watching, because we have quite a number of, you know, volunteers and supporters that may not be able to get out right now, they might not be able to leave, you know, or feel comfortable leaving right. their home still. This is something that if you have that skill, you mm -hmm. can still support without having to step foot in the facility if it's something that is not, you know, our, our volunteer opportunities are limited right now. This sort of, we're thinking of different creative ways for people to help. And this falls under that category perfectly. Yeah, so it really how, does. Let us know our Long Island folks, um, how can they get involved and make soap sacks or donate soap or whatever they need to do or donate materials 
to the SAC organization so that we can oh. use them. Oh, that's great. All right. Well, we have a website. It's www.soapsac, so S O A P S A C K S dot com. We have a very vibrant Facebook community, which is this virtual community of well wishers. People post patterns, they, um, you know, post their donations. Um, I constantly post, and the soap, uh, the Facebook page is Soap Sack exactly spelled like that and then we have an instagram page which is soap sacks um so that's ways but on the website there are free patterns there's the tag template um there's you know all the information you need to know but if you need to get in touch with me that's all on there my email address is on there we have a p.o box so you can mail this we don't want people mailing soap it's way too expensive so for those that want to make the sacks just send the sacks don't even worry about attaching the tags i can do that uh just enjoy making them feel you know feel a sense of love and compassion for the people that are making them that are receiving them so that's really the key you know we don't have a lot of rules it doesn't matter if they're too if they the, the soap sacks look so big or yours looks smaller then we'll use bigger soap like a bar of soap or you know we'll use smaller soaps you know some of the like ivory soap is a little smaller so don't worry it's not a garment it doesn't have to be perfect just we always say just enjoy making them um and know that like i said the person that receives them they're going to feel that sense of love and dignity and uh that that and it really is the response when you when you donate them and people actually receive they're just so thrilled Absolutely. to have that well they really are said i you know not only is personal hygiene obviously so important for our yes. survival but especially now that, especially now of course i think that you know everybody can relate to the fact that there is nothing like a good hot shower or bath to make sure that you're just you know clean and fresh and that that mm -hmm. applies also to all of the guests that we serve whether they have a home or not and if they exactly. don't when we donate these items to them let's say you know if i give if we give somebody a bar of soap and they don't have a home or a shower we can also direct them to a place where for now until we're able to let them into our building again somewhere where they're able to to, to take care of their personal hygiene as well. That's so, wonderful. so, so important. Right. I mean, and you never really, we take it for granted, right? You never really don't we? I know. the bars of soap and they're piled up in the in the closet from Costco. Exactly. And you don't even- A surplus, right? Without even right. thinking of it. So I, it, what you're doing is so important. I think that there's, it's really, I, I'm, I'm saying it because I don't, I think that people feel that they have to make these gigantic grand gestures or thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to make a difference when in fact no. one bar of Small soap acts. Yes. makes that same difference exactly right? we say the smallest act of kindness goes such a long way and you know when you're saying that, that you know your clients are um getting their bar of soap and they're going to another place to shower like now they have a sack to put that soap in because that becomes the other, you know, concern is like, now I have this wet soap, let's assume that they're not using it as a washcloth. And now they could at least put it in there. And it's a clean place to store their soap. So that's also really important, but absolutely. You know, so that that acronym again, uh, SAC, S-A-C-K, supporting a community with kindness. And, you know, we're big fans of the acronym at the end. Yes. I -N -A, right? <laughs> exactly. It's yes. Nutrition Network. So, you know, I think that is just I can uh, tell just by your enthusiasm and by your kindness that you are just, you know, just wonderful all around thank you so much oh, thank you uh, this and has I been such a great opportunity dana so thank you fun. and please if you'd like post this on your website so everybody can see the impact i will absolutely not only in your community but so many other places right. and um hopefully this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship between i Sarah know and i feel like i'm part of the in family now right oh, well, oh you are you are and our family our family's forever <laughs> so <laughs> So we just uh, want to thank you, Stacy, for all of your efforts, for finding us, for yeah. um, everything that you do. And of course, on behalf of the guests that we serve, thank you so much for all it's of my the pleasure. donations. Every, it's thank been my pleasure, and I hope to continue that friendship um, indefinitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. Stacy Wiener of Soap Sack, making a difference one so far at a time. Stacy, yes, thank you so much. That's exactly. Again. Take and, care, uh, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Dana. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah.